There you are. Happy 50th episode. Happy 5-0. That, that just made the whole episode. You know, I think we should use that for the intro now. The future of music. 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 The future of music podcast. Hey there, welcome! It's time. It's the time. It's the only time. We are here. It's the Future of Music podcast where we show you how to survive and thrive in the future of music. It's not just me. It's Ryan Withrow here. And now I also have the esteemed colleague, Jonathan Boyd. You're back, but not technically back. You're still somewhere else. First of all, where the heck are you right now? Well, I'm in a room with my wife, so I can't talk as loud as you, but I'm in Sydney, Australia at the moment. And she's sleeping. This is, this is officially this is officially the most awkwardly quiet podcast uh, of my life. So welcome to everybody in the process. So Australia, uh, and then you kind of listed out at least 850 additional places that you may be going to uh, right. next. So I won't even go through that. But it's good to see you. And uh, speaking of see you, uh, today is a very special day. Today is this is a very special day. Do you realize that this is episode fifty? Did you realize that this is episode 50 of the Future of Music podcast? We've done 50 of these dang things. And what better way to celebrate than the fact that Suno AI came out with version three. So we've got two minute long songs, way better quality. Let's hear what Suno has to say about our 50th celebration here. Let's let's take a listen. <laughs> We started out on this journey Just a couple of guys with a love for music And some big old dreams in our eyes We hit the road with a microphone in hand To bring you the future of music in the palm of your hand We talked about AI and virtual reality There you are. Happy 50th episode. Happy 5-0. That, that just made the whole episode. You know, I think we should use that for the intro now. We should just use that. <laughs> it's fantastic. I know. I know. Man, I got to tell before we even dive into the topic, before we even before we even dive into the topic, man, uh, I just randomly went on to Suno again to, to have it do something for us. And I noticed that they have this version three and I was like, oh no, oh no, I'm going to go deep into the rabbit hole now. So uh, I, I checked out version, it's incredible. First of all, if you can't tell, way better quality yet again. And now songs, two minutes uh, in the click of a button and it takes about 30 seconds to generate and you could go through it. Now you could even like critique it. You could say, I just want an instrumental track and you select that. You could start to do custom uh, lyrics and custom compositions within it that it'll create. But man, I did a that's few that's variations. I did that. I've done some metal stuff, of course. Uh, and it's just amazing to me how much better it's getting so quickly, so quickly. But yeah, man, we're here for episode 50. And uh, what better way to celebrate than with Suno AI? But let's kind of get in to the topic at hand. All right. We're still going to talk about AI stuff, of course, because we're nerds about it. But what, what exactly are we talking about, John? Why should people get excited today on episode 50? Yeah, so I think uh, you just showed them um, a really, really big change. And that is the general idea of music production, right? Music production, most people think of listening to it, right? But I'm also talking about videos, music videos, anything that's image related, anything that's video related. 
I kind of think we're to the point where, you know, a lot of people are going to be out of business and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. And, um, how good is that stuff really? And I think we just got a taste of that and it's, it's, it's really mind blowing. So I think you're going to really enjoy some of the stuff that we got to talk about today. Yeah, that's mind blowing. It's also mind blowing when people like subscribe and click the <laughs> alerts and uh, really help us out here and continue to be informed of the episodes that come out every week. And we post every day during the week, other stuff. So, I mean, you're missing out if you're not there. So make sure you do that. Follow us on your favorite podcast platform. And uh, yeah, we, we went from one variation of AI, which is the music generation side to this next booming industry, something that even if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, you probably know the topic we're going to discuss. You'll see soon. And it's this idea of AI generation being used for videos, mm -hmm. but now we're starting to see it used for music videos as well. So when I talk about videos, there are some major players coming out in the game of AI generated videos. And a lot of people are going and trying to create some of these with using it for like music and music videos and releasing mm -hmm. music videos rather than having to record something and pay a company to film them and edit and do all this stuff. So where this rabbit hole started for me in terms of AI uh, music video generation was from a YouTuber named Doodle Chaos. I think yeah, uh, like between one and two million subscribers on there. Uh, but it's very much an animation based, uh, video, uh, platform. And with that, they decided to try something. They decided to take a song and create a music video using something called disco diffusion, uh, which is one of many AI generation things for video content. Now the video itself, I'll have linked in here. It's a longer video. It's, it's an entire music video, but I just want to give you a little taste because I want to start here. I want to start with things that are kind of doing it well mm -hmm. and give us this feeling of, okay, yeah, but you know, some things are wrong. And then, and then I'm going to squash that in like 10 minutes time for you to show you that. But here's an example of somebody typing in what they want from an animated music video, putting in the music and what they got. So let's take a look at Doodle Chaos's attempt at this. Tune in out of starlight, the innocent lifetime flickers and flashes under a canvas. No, nobody seems worth it while the feeling sophisticated. The view is so restrained. The past is nearing closer and closer. I fear. So let's just cut the bullshit and tell me who's independent. Thumbs a little in and your life's escaping your mind. So you get the idea. It's yeah. very like animation based. You're you're pulling into the animation more and more. It's kind of trippy and yeah. and kind of cool. And it's it's a really cool use of it. And when we think about the fact that all it took was one prompt and uploading a song for it to right. match up with the song, you'll notice like even during the beats. Like when a phrase ends, like the camera's moving right as the phrase ends. So it recognizes what's happening in the music. And when like the verse hits, it goes through a different kind of flow and a different kind of feeling. So we're already seeing, okay, I could see some use for this. Yeah. But I instantly, just as I'm sure everybody watching noticed, okay, there are some issues. There are some like lapses like happening in there. There's some like glitching occurring occasionally sometimes it's hard to see what it's trying to create in this ai world and i've seen it a couple times but initial thoughts john from you before again i squash any of the concerns that anybody has in life let's stay here and talk about this is what we have available now right now people are using it and uh, what are your initial thoughts after seeing something like that knowing it's fully ai generated as far as the music is uh music is actual artist and then the video complete ai generated yeah, honestly, I think it's great. I mean, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't use something like this. And I think for, for music like that, which I actually liked it, um, it, it, it just looks like something, you know, I walk into a bar, or I walk into a restaurant and that's playing and the music is playing. I wouldn't think twice about like, oh yeah, that's the video. It just, it just goes with it. Right. And I think 
especially with the ability of the the video, uh, the generated video to go along with the music is probably going to be able to go along with the music a lot better than humans trying to like make something and time it just right and film certain things, you know, yeah. um, unless there needs to be something filmed. I, I, I mean, me personally, I would go crazy with just using AI video. Why not? Cause you're just sitting at the computer you can just generate it. Right. Um, even if this particular one, even if it, was kind of glitchy a little bit and you know you couldn't really tell i mean i don't really think that matters because you don't know what it's supposed to be so it just is and you just watch it as it goes along and i think the fact that it just keeps going is kind of just it, it kind of keeps you watching like and, and keeps you listening as well so i think it's great yeah and i would say too that it was a a proper use of of the actual platform so we also have to think about that was a smart way to use this mm -hmm. in terms of creating an animated feeling trippy feeling thing that's not intended to look like real life yeah now i will say that i have seen other variations of music video attempts where they actually try to do it with human subjects and it looks a lot like dolly uh 1.0 like it's you know it's it's that will smith eating spaghetti uh that's that went famous all over the meme world when they first did the the video generation and it's just like you know the spaghetti's coming out of nowhere and just like going into his mouth in a long stream and his mouth is all deformed right it, it's like there are certain things that are like i can see where they're headed i can yep. see where it's going it's getting there but then you see like Dolly one versus two and versus three. And it's like, oh, OK, that's it's happening quick. Same way we do with Suno and seeing the first iteration where it was grainy and it didn't even sound like a real instrument to what we just played, where it's like, oh, man, we are close to not being able to identify that this isn't real. Uh, in fact, I think I mentioned to you earlier that I had a friend in town, also a musician uh, who is is very much about the art, the skill, the creativity and and focused on like the human creativity. Uh, so obviously I, I tried to upset him by showing him all this stuff and it worked. Uh, he was not happy. Uh, he was very upset with all of this stuff. But I look at people like him who release albums, you know, every six months on Spotify. And I look at the music generation, sure. But the other side is the video. And for somebody like him, being able to release that stuff with music videos right. on stuff like YouTube, uh, I absolutely. Why wouldn't right. you? You should absolutely be doing that. And what do you know? Every day, if you've got a 14 track album that you're releasing, you've got 14 days worth of potential content now to that you didn't have, let alone the short ability with all this video stuff, everything. So you have a really easy way. So I think it's starting to, if you look at it in the right way, blend the idea of these people that are like, no, I just want to write music. I don't want AI to do any of this for me. It shouldn't. It's killing human creativity. But I think you could get your music that you actually write and create out there a lot more effectively without you having to pick up a camera at all and yep. be in a video at all. And I you can so. just create and be faceless in this stuff. So really, I look at this and I'm like, OK, I could see where people are like, yeah, it's it's OK. It's coming along. But I don't know if you uh, I, I know you have, but I don't know if you've really dug into Sora. S O. R A. So for those of you that don't know, Sora is the video generation AI technology from OpenAI. So we all know ChatGPT at this point. We all have heard that a million times over uh, that the go-to is ChatGPT for all of your AI needs in terms of what you're doing for the day. But the same company recently released Sora and it allowed its initial user base, its testers, its beta users to come in and start trying to build videos and make videos with this AI generation uh, tech technology. And this is just, I'm shocked, I'm amazed. Uh, I'm gonna play one video for you that's just imagery for eight seconds. And if you're not watching on YouTube, you should, because this is the moment that when I saw this stuff, it didn't just go music for me. I was like, oh boy, Hollywood is yeah. like done if mm -hmm. this continues like we don't need big budget films at all so the prompt that this one is from is uh greece like they just wanted to see santorini greece and that was it it said like an aerial drone shot of santorini greece that's it and this is what was produced just eight seconds of just uh, get ready here you go Th 
that AI generated that. Uh, let alone they have all this video content of people walking, going through downtown, uh, animated movies where robots are the main focus of of the movie. And it's, I would say there is like one to 5% wrong with it. That's it. Like we are at a point where I'm like, I think her shoe moved weird. I think yeah. that's that's what's wrong with this clip. The fact that I can't tell until like I look at something 20 times uh, and go, ah, that person's head didn't move the right way. Okay, it's fake. I'm shocked and I am amazed and I'm excited. So you go from this idea of disco diffusion, which is this thing that we went through. But if you actually use humans in it and you try to mimic human faces, it's a little wonky. Yeah, but we're already done with it. It's already done. We've already gone from here's the initial iteration. There you go to now you can never really tell the difference. Yeah, yep. it's it's so hard to tell the difference. So Sora came in to all the haters that are like, it, uh, it will never work and is producing some of the most incredible footage that is all generated by AI that you could ever imagine. Uh, so looking at the two, we start to ask ourselves the key questions that are the basis of the entire podcast, my friend. Mm -hmm. um, the old way of doing this stuff, we all know what it is because it's been around for so long. At this point, this so long is a relative term, right? I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, movies haven't even been around long. Like, it's such a short thing. Um, but you think about the old way, and the old way is expensive. I guess that's the best way that I can describe it. It costs a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of equipment, people, editing, making sure everything's done before you even have a final product. I think I've done maybe one or two music videos in my day when I was a youngin'. And it took like a month to get it back and to actually have oh, a, yeah. a draft and to look at. So the time is an issue. The cost is an issue. The resources and people and all the equipment is a huge issue. And that's why so many people don't do it. Uh, it's impossible. So we go from this old variation to now in this moment, being able to just do it all with AI. And it's it's incredible because we just started talking about AI generation 50 episodes ago. That, that's and there was a point when we were doing two episodes a week or so. Right. Um, so it hasn't even been 50 weeks. It's probably been like 35 to 40 weeks of of progress. And here we are. I can't even tell the difference. I, I would look at that and go, that's drone footage. That's yep. definitely that drone footage. I just looked at. Yeah. Yeah. So let me hear your initial thoughts on, of course, we talked about uh, Disco Diffusion, which was mm -hmm. cool. It, it was used in the right way, I could say, because it, it leaned into the glitchiness. But now we see Sora coming in and soon more people will have access to Sora and it'll start learning even more effectively, just like Suno, mm -hmm. and it'll continue getting better and better and better. So what are your initial thoughts about the video generation as a whole, but then moving into so quickly something as advanced as Sora? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's been extremely quick. You know, you, we say 50 episodes and that sounds like a lot, but it really hasn't been that long, right? It hasn't even been a year of do, doing, you know, 50 episodes. And at that time, which sounds like it's a long time in the past, Sora didn't exist as far as we knew, you know, publicly it didn't exist. This kind of stuff didn't really exist on this level. And now it's to the point where you can't even tell. Yes, there are some issues, like you said, like, w did her shoe move weird? Was there something weird with this? Obviously, they're going to, that's all going to be fixed probably by 12 o'clock today, right? So like, um, <laughs> or tomorrow. But I mean, it, it's, the thing is, I think there's so much to talk about um, in this topic, especially when it comes to musicians, because like you said, your friend, and we all have friends like that. And I think any musician, maybe not any musician, but almost any musician probably has some level of like, holding on to the old way because that's how we learn that's how we you know that that's where we came from essentially that's what uh to us music is and where music comes from and how music is written it's all it's all part of the process um you know writing albums with a band writing albums with a group of people and like coming out with hit songs and uh, you know all of that that process uh, is it's unnecessary now and i think that there's mm -hmm. there's definitely going to be uh, there there are and there's going to continue to be huge groups of people who are trying to hang on to the way things were. But the reality is that things just aren't that way anymore. And when it comes mm -hmm. to what most of the world overall in general cares about is ROI. So can I, am I going to sit down at a computer and write a little prompt or even probably in the, in the near future, meaning like maybe you can already do this maybe next week, maybe in next month, 
you can just say, Hey Siri in your phone and say, make me a, a music video about this, 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 and boom, it's it just, there it is. And maybe it automatically uploads to your YouTube channel or whatever. So the point is, uh, whether you like it or not is, is kind of irrelevant in terms of where things are going because it's very clear where things are going. And it, in terms of when you think about, when you put your hat on and think about, okay, what's the highest ROI here, which is what drives the economy in general, it's the, it's the AI stuff. Like it just is. It It's instant to write a song. It's instant to make a music video and it's only going to get better. And then, you know, that, so that's the, the music side of things. Um, that's why we always encourage people to at least learn about it, right? You don't have to necessarily do it or embrace it, but figure out it, it, it's a tool. So if you're trying to dig holes, don't be the caveman trying to dig a hole with your hands. Use the shovel that the guy just invented, right? Just take the time to learn how it works. You don't have to use it. Um, the second thing is, you know, I think this is a more general population topic, but like if you can make videos and obviously voices that you can't tell is real or not. I mean, sadly, a lot of people are going to leverage this for scams and you have to wonder like what else is going to come from this. There's going to be a lot of upside, but also equal equivalent amount of downside. So that's the, the other interesting part. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I agree. I think it was last episode. Um, there are over 200 artists, like pretty well respected artists that that have been coming out now and they're signing petitions to really try to protect the intellectual property because it is becoming an issue. I mean, we see yeah. we see the estates of people like Frank Sinatra coming out now and being like, we just saw 20 YouTube videos with his voice. Like what? Why? Why? Why are we allowing this? So we're starting to see this take place, just like you're saying. It's it's yep. going to grow that way. And you know, part of the conversation I had with the person that was in town here, as as he was getting so upset about this stuff, was how long has the music industry been the music industry? Not long. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like it's not like Bach was back there. Like man, I hope I get a lot of streams on this drop I got coming up next week. Uh, it just, it doesn't happen. It's not like he's like tour released by the meet and greet package. Uh, it, it just didn't happen. It wasn't until, you know, recently that what we think of as the music industry and being yeah. a musician and working in the quote unquote music industry, it wasn't until recently that yeah. that was a thing. So we have to understand that, you know, there's nothing that's been set in stone that has lasted 300 years uh plus that that we're doing that we're like don't take it away no man it's been like approaching a hundred years that's it like that's that's it so it's gonna change and you know it's easy to change something that hasn't existed a long time and yeah. we don't know the patterns at which it does change until hundreds of years from now and we'll start to understand like how frequently does the quote unquote music industry change and shift mm -hmm. and why do we need to figure that out because you know, you have to adapt at this point. It, it really is something that you have to do. So today, as I'm in Suno, I'm typing in metal stuff. And instead of getting angry that it sounds so good, I'm thinking, how do I take away certain elements of this? And like, what do I like about that? How could I use what I'm hearing as far as the rhythm is concerned and some of my parts and bringing that in? It's just inevitable. It's going to take stuff over and you have to embrace it and figure out how to live with it or be the guy that just writes albums that don't sell and yeah. don't get streams or views as long as you're expressing yourself creatively. That's fine. Uh, but know that the old way of doing it is not going to get you famous and rich like it did 50 years ago. It's just not going to no, happen. It's, it's over. And you have to figure out something else. Yeah, it's done. It's done. And I hated to tell the guy that that's been playing uh, music for 35 years. Uh, but I had to tell him, like, it's it's not the same. So you have this dream of, you know, this this fantasy of being the Beatles again. And yep. like that time is gone. It's, it's yep. not coming back. So you have to figure it out. So what do you think that means then as we continue? Because we're already at a point where I can do an entire song uh, with Suno that is very hard to determine if it's real or fake. Mm -hmm. I can then put it into Sora and I could do a music video for every single one of those songs that's completely fake but looks real. So we're already in that moment. So what the heck happens in the future? 
man. Like five years from now, what, what could possibly change or be different? That's not already blowing my mind. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think obviously the new stuff that we're watching come out is, is going to essentially grab a lot more market share, right? It's going to, it's in my opinion, it's going to kind of take over and become the focal point, the norm. That doesn't mean the old stuff is going to go away. You just mentioned Bach earlier. Uh, and by the way, Bach drop would be a great band name. But if you, if you, <laughs> if you think about like, Classical music, you know, I listened to classical music yesterday. It's not going anywhere. It's not like it's going to like be become extinct. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as I always use the analogy of listening to records. There's a lot of people that listen to records. I like to listen to records. Um, and they kind of, it kind of came back around, you know, in a wave. So I think the same thing is going to, is going to happen with, uh, we talk about this all the time, but with people learning and playing physical instruments, it's not going to stop. It's just not the path forward for a career. It's just, I mean, mm. there will still be some careers, but if you're, you're talking about becoming the next Beatles, right? That that opportunity, the window came and it went and the Beatles were the Beatles and nobody else can be the Beatles and it's gone. It's just gone. So I think in the future, and it's already happening, we see this. And I think the gorillas actually, or just gorillas, was one of the first people who kind of, uh, the first bands or groups that kind of took advantage of this where they had digital characters as the band. And I was like, you know, they were kind of before their time, if you will. Um, but I think that's going to become the norm. And we're not actually going to have, I, I really don't think we're going to have the, the majority of music that we hear out there is not going to be bands. It's not necessarily even going to be artists. It's all about ROI, right? So it, I think every person who is the face behind some of these artists or some of this AI generation or AI videos is actually going to morph into marketers and creators, creators as in like people who make content and videos or whatever. And they're, they're just marketing it online. I really think that's what it's going to turn into so that the actual vinyl records, the physical, you know, musicians that play physical instruments, et cetera, there's the good, there's, I think there's going to continue to be a population of those guys maybe until humans are, you know, unless they're banned by the government by some reason, if there is a government in the future. But like, I don't think that's going to go away. We've had physical instruments for, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. It's just a thing that people like to do. Um, but I do think that what we consider to be musicians or traditional musicians, the population is going to shrink and they're going to become like a fringe kind of um, vinyl record niche type group. And the majority of the music that's out there, like I said, is that it's going to be generated and it's going to be generated specifically for ROI. And the people who aren't in big companies or, or the, the, the people, the, the entities who are putting out most of the stuff that sells is going to be big companies as it always has been. But the, the majority of the people out there, like I said, I think they're going to morph more into becoming online marketers and creators rather than being musicians. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree, especially talking to uh, a lot of the musicians that I do. And I like your distinction, right? We'll always have musicians, but career musicians is like the shift. That's that's the difference because a lot of them won't embrace it, um, sadly. And I mean, for rightfully so, you know, if they want to hone in and master a craft of, of their instrument, that takes full commitment. Mm -hmm. So then adding a stack of, of social marketing, uh, knowing when to release new records and singles versus albums versus all like, that's just a lot goes into that. Yeah. Um, so I think that it is going from this, you, these years of, you could just be a musician, you hire somebody, they market you, they make you a ton of money, uh, to, you have to make a choice. Do you just want to be a musician that creates things and expresses yourself and really learns and has fun? Or do you want to be a musician that also has to learn marketing, branding, and scaling this to something. And as you were talking, I was reminded of something as simple as this has happened before, right? It's just a different variant. It's a different variable here as far as what we're talking about. But I remember when EDM, uh, dubstep, like all of that started really emerging and modern musicians were like, what is this garbage? All you're doing is taking sounds, you're clicking it, you're dropping it, and you're messing with it to make it sound different. Yeah. And now look at the world of electronic music. Like it's just, it's huge. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the, you know, feelings I get is it's almost similar to something like that, where this new version 
of something that never existed before. This new genre of music is starting to emerge and people are questioning it going, yeah. no, that's not going to work. It'll never happen. And 10 years from now, people will go to a festival and some guy will be hidden up there who's just pressing play and playing an AI generated song uh, that's like just wildly popular. So it's no different is kind of what I'm trying to say. It's it's a different way that something's changing. But change like this has always happened in the music industry. And I think for that reason, we have to realize like it's a big change, but it's always going to keep changing. It will always be changing and it's never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, if you drop the Beatles in right now and you told them to get famous, who knows? But who knows if they would be able to do it, right? Because they were relying solely on that creativity and hiring the right people to get them in the right places. And it has changed so drastically since then that, you know, they could be like, you didn't do enough short form content this week, Beatles. So you didn't make it. Sorry. Uh, you just don't know. And then you see people like Snoop Dogg all the time complaining that he could have a billion streams and he makes like $40,000. Mm -hmm. And it's just... It's always evolving and changing as far as career musicians are concerned. For me personally, I'm excited because this means that uh, instead of viewing it as somebody taking your job or taking away creativity, again, it allows you to be more creative in the one thing that you want to focus on. Yep. And that's what I think people need to really realize and step back and not be pushy toward the idea of this new modern age of technology and music stuff. Um, they need to go, OK, well, well, let it do that then. I'll take those two hours I would have taken to edit a dang video and I'll, I'll practice and I'll play better or I'll write a new song or I'll be able to express more. So really living with it because it's inevitable. It's here. It's going to stay. Yeah. Uh, it'll change. Sure. But it's just going to keep changing for more advance and, and what's happening. But yeah, I agree with you. So there you go. There's there's Sora. There's Disco Diffusion. What a great name. I feel like that could be like a, a disco fusion band. All right. I feel sure. like we should just like and bring in some blues, some funk and disco and it's disco diffusion. Uh, and what, this is, by the way, it's 5.2, the version turbo. So it's turbo disco diffusion. Gosh, that's a great name. Uh, but in any event, that's it. So I'm going to put links for a lot of stuff in the show notes. I'm going to put it in for uh, the music video that we watched. I'm going to also put in different examples of Sora. You have to see it. They have videos of animals, humans. Uh, animated movies that they're they're trying to have it produce. And Pixar is probably terrified uh, at this point and already pursuing legal action against AI generated videos because it's, you got to see it. But John, my friend, it's always good to have you. It's always good to be here with you again. And uh, safe travels, who knows where you're going. Uh, at this point, I'm not even going to ask. It doesn't even matter. It could change tomorrow. But all of you, make sure you like, subscribe, click the alerts, follow us on your favorite platform as well. And we will see you next time on the Future of Music podcast.